An overhead crane is a piece of machinery that is used to lift a product and move it from one spot to another. An overhead crane is brought in for two reasons efficiency and safety. With a lot of fork truck traffic, you're looking at major safety issues and the fact that you have personnel trying to move within the plant as well as fork trucks, that tends to get pretty congested. So then comes the efficiency where an overhead crane can move from one end to another rather quickly and doesn't have to maneuver around any obstructions on the floor. Impact after putting in an overhead crane is immediate. Your efficiency is immediately increased because you no longer have to deal with the floor obstructions. Everything can be lifted overhead and moved in an efficient manner. Safety, again, immediate impact. You don't have a bunch of fork trucks running around on the plant floor and your personnel can move about without having to have that obstruction in their way as well. With putting in a new overhead crane, you also have new safety things that you need to be concerned with. One of them being moving product over top of personnel. That is something against all OSHA policies. You also need to be cognizant of what that does to change your process. While it's easier to move materials around, you also do need to be cognizant that there are new concerns that you need to take into account. So most common applications we see, die handling, coil handling, general fabrication where you're lifting parts from one workstation to another. Welding, that is what an overhead crane is typically used for. Now you'll also see them in steel mills or heavy fabrication as well, where they're doing a lot more work. An overhead crane can be used both indoors and outdoors. Um, you'll see them even partially indoors and outdoors for moving materials. A lot of you know, steel processing facilities will be stocking their materials outside and then moving them indoors for fabrication purposes. So uh, they, they do have a versatility of being used in any environment. Basic components of an overhead crane. You have a bridge which moves on a runway rail. So we'll start with the runway itself. You either will have runway beams and it's two beams that run the outermost portion of the bay. And those are either mounted to a building column or on its own separate sister column. So with those runway systems, you also have header support beams. You can have kicker beams that are used for support. The bridge itself, is carried with what we call end trucks. And those are, again, used to run on top of those rails back and forth down the length of the bay. The bridge beam itself is what spans the bay, and that we call a bridge girder. Now that could be a single or double girder, meaning one or two beams for the hoist to ride on. Hoist itself is the piece that actually does the mechanical lifting. That can be a manual powered, it can be electric powered, or even air powered. The piece that carries the hoist back and forth across the girder is called the trolley. So the hook is attached to the hoist by a wire rope or chain, and that is what's used to attach to the load and do the lifting. So a good place to start with regards to determining the style of crane you need is how is it mounted? You can have an underrunning crane that is mounted to a building structure that doesn't actually have columns to support it. It uses the building structure to hang from. Um, what you have to account for in that is whether the building is designed to actually support it. You can still do an underrunning crane, but if the building is not able to support it, then a whole structure is needed. From there, you look into a top running crane which allows you to have a little bit more hook height than an underrunning because there isn't a support header above the crane to support it. So the real thing you want to look into is whether your building can support, whether you have the floor space to support it, and then how important is that hook height that you guys are looking to attain.